Greetings sinners and welcome to another video from Simple Needs. I'm going to try and give you a quick run through on the 1.02 and 1.03 update that I just did recently. Um, in particular I want to cover the prefix change and how that will help you merge two sets of horns together and I'll also touch on some of the other things that I added. So let's jump right into this. You can see I've created a folder here in my inventory. It's called Merge Test. It's got a copy of the Molokar VIP horns and HUDs in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I've obviously already made some changes to these horns. I want to make one more change that I wanted you to see um, so that maybe you can do some things with a few less quicks, clicks uh, when you want to customize your horns. Uh, first thing I'm, I've done here is I'm going to go and I'm going to view the back side of the horns so that I can see these center anchor points. I like to hide the chains on most of my horns, particularly if I'm going to merge some sets together. You're probably going to want to hide the chains on those. Um, rather than having to hide everything independently though, or even click on each chain to hide it, if you come on the back here and you hide these center anchors, these slow open rings with the balls on the ends, since the chains hang off of that in the center, when you take those away, the chains will hide and they will hide all of the decor that's attached to them. So I've done the one and now I'm going to do the other and as a reminder you click and hold on something to toggle it on or off and you have to make sure you're on the appropriate surface panel um, otherwise that click will be ignored. And since we were doing part of the jewelry, the metal, we want to be on the metals tab. All right, you can see it's hidden all of those chains and all the decor on them. Now as a reminder, dependent jewelry can't be shown once you've hidden something. So in other words, I could not toggle this piece of decor back on this drop gem while this chain is hidden and I can't toggle that chain back on until I turn that center anchor back on. Now if I turn that center anchor back on, it's going to turn on all the dependent uh, jewelry as well. So I hope that saves people some clicks. Um, only time will tell. All right, and the other thing I want to point out here is that if you were to then change the metal and apply to all, it'll go through and it'll rapidly change all of the visible metal decor and it completely ignores the stuff that's hidden because it's not going to show that anyway. Just wanted to let you all know that. Now I've got a set of horns here that I've done some changes to. They're just fine the way they are. What I want to do is I want to detach that set of horns because I want to make sure that I don't wind up with an old SL bug coming back to bite me. It's a cache reversion or sometimes I'll wear an attachment and it will look like it did before you changed it the last time you wore it. It's really kind of annoying. Um, looks here like all my changes stuck. My jewelry is still the right color. The chains are still gone. So now that I know that that's happened, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the horns and the HUD off and I'm going to make a second copy of both of them. So I'll just uh, control C, control V in my folder, and now I've got a second copy of each one. I'm going to wear the new copies. Go ahead and stop myself from jumping around in the background again. And now I'm going to use the one of the new options from the latest patches. I'm going to click on the Simple Needs logo, and I'm going to bring up this menu. And I'm going to go to the prefix. Now you can see right here tells you what prefix your HUD is currently using. I set those as I set them up. The first set of horns was H1A. The next set of horns was H1, uh, H2A. And when you get the barbed versions of the horns, you'll see that those are like H1B and H2B, that kind of thing. Um, so I want to change the prefix on these horns. So I'll click that. And I'm going to go ahead and change these to H6D. You see that it changes right here. It says this HUD is now using H6D. And I also got a chat message that said that the horns were ready using prefix H6D. So now that I know that I've changed the prefix, I'm going to go ahead and detach them. I always recommend detaching things one at a time and even re-wearing them one at a time if you want to make sure the changes stuck uh, so that you don't wind up with that reversion. I'm going to rewear both of those things. If you look in the HUD menu, you can see it still says it's using prefix H6D. Um, wouldn't hurt 
to go to prefix and set the prefix again to the same thing and that will repeat that the HUD is using it and it will also tell you, the horns will tell you, that they are using that prefix again. Now since you had changed the prefix in the HUD, if it had not stuck in the horns you wouldn't have gotten a chain message because they would have still been listening for H6A messages. I know that sounds a little complicated but just trying to give you a way to check and see how things are working now because SL is what SL is and sometimes it does weird stuff. Um, another thing you can always go do is just go to the mesh panel or make a change and you can see you're still getting changes so we obviously have a HUD and a set of horns that communicate. Now I've used a lot of words here all we've really done is we've changed a filter on this HUD and this set of horns so it looks for messages that have H6D in the beginning of the message while the other set of horns looks for messages that are H6A. So now that I've got a set of horns on a different prefix I can wear the first set of horns again and I'll have two sets of horns that look exactly the same on my head now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the second set of horns so that they uh, you know complement the first set. So let's see if I make them smaller for instance and then I can rotate them out a little bit and I wind up with a set of horns that kind of complements the other ones. You can adjust those any way you want to uh, get the look that you're after. While I'm doing this I'm going to show you one of the other things that I added in 1.02 which is the ability to unlock the rotation on the X and the Y axes. So if you click the Simple Needs logo again on your HUD, you bring up a menu and I'm going to choose Rotation. And then I'm going to choose Unlock and you see that ungrazed down here on the HUD and then I can also adjust things on those other axes. Now just as a reminder if you've got your chains and all of that showing um, that's going to look weird in some cases because you would have chains that are hanging in decor that's pointed the wrong way because it won't be pointed down. Um, all of that's personal preference and if that's something that you're willing to have going on with your chain showing that's all fine and dandy whatever suits you. Now let's see I want to adjust these so that uh, they're not clipping quite so much. Oh. You see, even I get confused about what moves things what way sometimes. Um, and you've got all these different axes that you can adjust the horns on now if you uh, uh, unlock the, uh, the other rotation axes and uh, we'll call that done. So now I've got two sets of horns that complement each other. Now what I want to do is I want to merge these together. However, one thing that you need to remember when you merge two, sorts of, two sets of horns together is that they reset. And when they reset, they will return to their default rotation and position. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to come up here again and use the menu, click the Simple Needs logo, and then I'm going to go to Mesh and I'm going to save the mesh uh, settings that are on this second set of horns right now. Remember, it's only going to change these uh, because these are still on the original prefix and these are on a new prefix. So I'm going to save the mesh on those and you'll get a chat message that says you should go ahead and take these off and put them back on to make sure you don't get the inventory reversion. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to detach those horns and then I'm going to re-wear them. I'm going to add them, of course, because if I just wore them, oh, I took off the wrong set. If you re-wore them, it would knock the first set off. So I've got to detach the second set of horns. Come on, Second Life, cooperate. I swear, it's a never-ending challenge some days, isn't it? Detach. There we go. Now I'm going to add them back, and they're still where they were, so remember the changes. So now I'm going to take them all off, and I'm going to res them.
res both sets. Now what I'm going to do is I want to line these up. Now I showed you how to do this once before in another video and in Firestorm it's especially easy. You res them, you pick a set. I'm going to pick the bigger set and I'm going to come down here um, and I'm going to click this C button which copies the values that are in position and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste them and that overlaps them exactly. Now if you are not using Firestorm you have to do it the old-fashioned way. Let me change my grid to something that's a little bit bigger so it makes it a little easier. I have mine set pretty fine by default. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to line these up so that they're set fixed hard on a grid point so that way it's really easy to make sure that they're lined up. You see that it wants to snap to the grid point um, as long as your snap is turned on. And then I can grab the other set and I can move them until I get them snapped to the same point. Um, and it's worth noting that you don't necessarily have to fight with it to get it perfect. You can always adjust them afterwards. But when it comes to some of the settings, remember that they are mirrored um, on the left to right axis. So you really want to make sure that they're lined up the same. Now, I believe that both Firestorm and the original viewer have this align feature. Um, which you can also use to align stuff uh, but to be honest I've never actually used it so I don't know what else involved in aligning things that way um, so if you know how to use it you can always use that too you know, I've done it gone and screwed up my alignment here so I got to let me get a line back up anyway once you have the two sets lined up and you'd be looking for all of the root prims to be in the same position so they overlap and then you pick one set of horns and you pick the second set of horns and you link them together you can either use this button here or you can hit control L and you'll get two messages in your chat you'll get a message from each set of horns the script in each one that says I'm ready with my prefix so I got one that's ready with H6A and one that's ready with H6D now you can also rename the horns because the horns are mods so you could come in here and you could say you know model car times two or whatever you wanted to do name them anything that's meaningful to you pick them back up and wear them and now I've got one set of horns that has both sets within that single attachment useful for saving attachment points it's really not going to make any difference in your complexity rating because all the meshes are still there um, now you can see here that even though this is one set of horns now I can still use the HUD to adjust either set independently now I can also change the uh, uh, material settings and the surface settings independently as well. Um, I know that what I've seen at least one of you very imaginative sinners do is instead of messing with the effects you might go to the horns and change one of the sets of horns to a different color to complement the first set. You can do whatever you want with that. So that's how those functions are used. Um, within the uh, menu here, um, you still can change the prefix, but make sure you don't save them to the same prefix. If you were to go and set this second set of horns back to H6A, um, you'd lose the ability to adjust them independently and the other thing is is that then the HUD will only control half the horns and basically the way that works is it only looks for the first mesh that's named properly for each part um, so that kind of means that you, you essentially lose functionality on half the sets of horns so you don't want to do that um, 
I know that some people would like to be able to control both sets with a single HUD, but we're talking about up to 60 faces on each of two HUDs. There's some complicated juggling that I had to do in the background, so I can't um, do that right now. I'm going to look at it in the future. Maybe I'll roll another update out at some point so that once you get them all set up, you can uh, set them back to the same prefix and make all the changes together at the same time. But for right now, um, it's kind of a mess, and I definitely don't recommend doing that. Um, I think the rotations, the position, the scale, and the rotation adjustments will work, but the surface changes will not, because when you click on something on the HUD, what it's actually doing is it's looking to see what's the name of the mesh that you clicked, and it's sending that information along to the horns, and the horns have a mesh that's named the same. And when it finds that mesh, it makes the change, and then it stops looking. Um, so it won't find the second one. And the reason that I have it stop looking is, is if it continues to look through every mesh every time for every change, then the changes all take longer. And I wanted to make everything as responsive as possible for you guys rather than, uh, you know, dragging it out. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, the help note card will be updated, uh, so will the website, and as a reminder, if you click the help, you can always choose to get the web help instead of the uh, note card help, and it will take you to the help web page that I have set up for the items. I've been adding to that as I add to the new inventory. Um, it hasn't been updated to 1.03 yet, but it will be right after I get done setting all these into the vendor system because now I've got a new video to go with it so I'll link that on the page and in the note card as well. Alright, I think that's everything I'm going to ramble on about this time. Thank you for joining me for another video. I look forward to getting through the updates on these horns and then I will be rolling out the barbed variants of all of these horns. I can show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Let's see if I go to the dark fell horns. You know what the current dark fell horns look like. And the barbed ones instead have a more exaggerated serration on them. You can, oops, that's not the dark fell. Let's try that again. Too much stuff in the old inventory. Still doing it. Dark fell contents. Dark fell barbed. There we go. And you can see the exaggerated serration there. Um, so each one of the sets, six sets of horns that I've released so far, the five plus the VIP horns, all have a serrated version. And I'll be getting the serrated versions out during this week and next week. Um, and once those are in the store, I will be working on bento tails, which I am really looking forward to. Uh, some of you have seen that I've been wearing a prototype bento tail for a while now. I've got it set up so that it matches my spines that I wear all the time. There will be some spine bento tails. There will be some that share the same decor that is on the uh, pandemonium horns. There'll be some with spades, some without, some with spines, some without. I'm going to offer a bunch of different tails. Um, I have some animation work to do. I've got a new tail AO that I've got to finish coding. Um, so all of that's going to come together here during July. I expect to have tails coming out this month and then come the end of July when I do the VIP group gift. The, that gift will be a, uh, a bento tail. Um, I want to be on the wings in August, but I do also have some other stuff going on in the background. I have the Osiris update still in the works. I really need to get that done. I need to get it changed over to the new, uh, you know, A6 style HUD, which I think is going to be really great for Osiris. Not to mention the customization code is all new and completely different, so that should make the customization snappier. And for those of you that have had the stack heap errors, which I still cannot replicate, it drives me mad. Um, I am making sure that I increase all of the uh, stack heat buffers so that there will be more room in the script and less likelihood of those stack heat errors. So I should be able to kill those off. Um, some new features that are coming to Osiris are going to include being able to give somebody a remote HUD so they can control your 
Osiris uh, attachment, uh, which I know that some people have been asking for. I know that that other really awesome uh, male genitalia out that, and I have nothing but compliments for Ray Silent. His product is fantastic. Uh, he offers that feature, so you guys have been asking for it from me. I'm going to offer that feature too. All right, uh, ramble out. Uh, thanks for joining me for another video. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Stay sinful.